All right, Bobby Gaines again. And today I'm going to talk about something that's kind of been bothering me for a while, but it was just exacerbated by the recent reviews that I read of the new Sonic game, Sonic Lost World for Wii U. Now let me preface this by saying I literally only bought my Wii U for this game. Um, as we see some of the footage here, this game looks fantastic. Um, I haven't played it, so I'm not exactly in the position to say how good it is. It's coming out in about a week, but... Um, anyway, in general, this game not even withstanding. The Sonic series has been under just so much scrutiny, and not just from reviewers, from their own fans. Ever since, I don't know, ever? No, I mean, seriously, Sonic and Mario back in the 90s were platforming gods. I mean, both of those series put out quality game after quality game. And I have the more controversial opinion that Sonic Adventure is better than Mario 64, a matchup in which most people would take the former rather than the latter, but I don't know. A lot of people consider Sonic went downhill after Sonic Adventure 2. There's like, you know, after that there was Sonic Heroes, Sonic 06, which I'm not going to argue was a terrible game, uh, Sonic Unleashed, and the like. So, you know, Sonic has just had this belief that his legacy ended in the 90s. Some people even rewrite history to the point where Sonic Adventure came out in 99, and it got 9s and 10s for reviews. You can go look it up. That game did very well by review standards. The first Sonic Adventure, that is. That was the first 3D Sonic game. So for those who say Sonic can't do 3D right, those same critics said he did the first game. And the second game. Because Sonic Adventure 2 did very well as well. But when they re-released those same games with Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic Adventure DX, a lot of reviewers gave it much lower scores. They said, oh, the camera's buggy, Sonic doesn't work in 3D. That's not what you were saying five years ago. So just go back and look at the facts. Then you move past that. Sonic Heroes is kind of a game that gets kind of just average reviews, even from me. I don't love it or hate it, it's just kind of there. And then, obviously, the game, the series went in a bunch of different directions. There was Sonic 06, which was supposed to be a reboot for the series, mostly hated. But that was because it was terribly glitchy. Again, I'm not defending every Sonic game that ever came out, but let's move on here to Lost World. And in between that, just the Sonic fans have been as bad, if not worse, than reviewers. Pretty much any time anything comes out about a new Sonic game, I'm on the forums quite a bit. I don't actually post, but I read what people say, and a lot of the complaints are just as shallow as, like, it doesn't look like the old Sonic games. Like, it's really that shallow. Or Robotnik's, like, look isn't classic, or Sonic's eyes are green. Like, it's really that stupid. When the Sonic 4, ep like, Episode 1 and 2 came out, Episode 1 got pretty good reviews, Episode 2 not so much. I thought both games were about the same level. I like those games, I don't love them, but again, reviewers could go one way or another. But I'm not even going to the reviewers yet. They have their moment. Right now I'm talking about the fans. The fans, some of them really do love the games, and some of them will get excited, like myself, anytime Sega puts anything out. When Lost World was announced, a lot of people were excited. But then there was that other group, who after seeing three or four seconds of a trailer were like, this game looks like crap. Based on nothing, this game looks like crap. Uh, it doesn't play right, Sonic looks like Mario, uh, the game Sky is too blue, I don't like the Deadly Six, I don't like this, I don't like that. Sonic fans are the reason why the Sonic series is so erratic. You want to know why no two games have been consistent in the last ten years? It's because of fans. It's because we want more speed, we want less speed, we want more loop-de-loops, we want no loop-de-loops, we want just the most bullshit things. That's why... Other than, like, Unleashed, Colors, and Generations, which I thought were three very solid games, like, Sega has struggled to make two or three in a row that were the same game. And that's because fans complained, and critics complained. Like, Sonic fans are like the girlfriend that you can't please. Like, it's like, make the game faster. Oh, not that fast. Make the game slower. Not that slow. What are you doing? Oh, make his eyes green. Not that green. What do you want? I think the problem is that everyone has a vision in their mind of what the ideal Sonic game should be, and for whatever reason, Sega hasn't read millions of people's minds. Even I have a vision. I mean, again, like I see kind of a Sonic CD type of universe, except in 3D with futuristic cities and Ferris wheels and different things. Kind of crazy. Like, that's me. Lost World actually kind of lines up more with what I was looking for, so... I don't know how I'll feel about the game. I might hate it after all this, but let's get to the reviews. I actually brought some quotes... Yes, I did my research this time. I was just appalled when I saw the Sonic Lost World reviews. Not so much because I thought everyone would love the game, but because a lot of previews of the game said it was going to be pretty decent at least. I was thinking it would at least get seven and a half scores, seven scores. Nope, not always the case. Although, 
Sonic Lost World has scored better than some Sonic games in recent memory. But let's see here. I'm actually going to start with GameSpot because they really ticked me off. Both their video review and their written review, it's the same text. But if you watch the video review for GameSpot, Sonic Lost World, first of all, the guy just sounds pompous. I'm not even saying that because he has a British accent, although that helps. But he literally says things like, the game just isn't really all that clever. I'm like, you know what, you suck. Anyway, so GameSpot. And, and, oh yeah, every review has to have this funny little moniker, like this funny little name. So, Sonic Lost World, their title of the review was A Lost Cause. Get it? Because it's Lost World. That's funny. So, let's see here. In describing the first level, the reviewer says, Long grass-covered cylinders and floating planetoids are home to complex spring arrangements and rolling spiked balls that leave the tiniest of gaps for you to squeeze through. Well, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Who wants a challenging, fun Sonic game with things you're used to seeing, and spike balls that you have to try to dodge. They should just put no spike balls in it, and you should just run right through it. Or how about this? Enemies that lie directly in the path of speed boosters and at the end of spring-aided jumps. In other words, there are too many enemies in the first level, in the first couple levels. There's too many enemies, and they're right in the way of speed boosters. How am I supposed to speed through it if there's an enemy in my way? Are you stupid? That's how Sonic games have been since the beginning of time. Look back at Sonic 3, one of the greatest games ever, according to even critics. There were always, like, bumpers and things that would knock you back into enemies. That's how they make the game. It's called a challenge. You know what it's called if Donkey Kong Country is really hard? It's called a challenge. You know what Sonic is called if it's really hard? It's called a lost cause. I'm sorry. I gotta get back to reading these. That's not even all, though. There is such a bias toward the 2D Sonic. Like, if they made a 2D Sonic game, it automatically is gonna get three points higher than a 3D one. So this is still from the same GameSpot review, when uh, the Mr. Reviewer here says... Lost Worlds fares better in its 2D sections, naturally, where some of the classic Sonic platforming magic makes an appearance. So you mean to tell me the same game that you gave a 5 to has some platforming magic in it? And who says that, by the way? He then goes on to kind of patronize the series with that 2D magic, saying, Sonic goes about knocking out badniks and freeing the cutesy animals inside. Ah, yes, you've figured out the complexities of the modern-day Sonic, haven't you? Freeing the cutesy animals. Again, I mean, I'm not expecting everyone to like the game. But GameSpot in particular just has rubbed me wrong in recent times. They did give Sonic Generations a good score. They gave Sonic Colors a good score. So they can do it. Um, Sonic Unleashed, to me, was the most baffling thing of all. Because they said Sonic 06, the game before Sonic Unleashed, they gave that a 3.5 and said it was the lowest point in Sonic's career. Not disagreeing there. Then the next game, Sonic Unleashed, they made significant improvements. You'd think it would get at least the same score. It gets a 2.5. It gets a lower score than their own worst game in history. That's not even consistent. So you're saying Sonic Unleashed, with better, like, everything, is worse than the worst game. That, that to me, is where they lose me. Then we have IGN, which IGN, I'm actually going to go a little bit easier on this time. Um, usually, I really don't like their reviews. They did give it a 5.8, but they sort of explained it. They, they kind of tried not to be biased, but try to listen to this and try to understand it. This is from the IGN um, gameplay review of Sonic Lost World. Lost World is a strange sort of design where no one thing is broken, but everywhere you look, there's a subtle but significant tuning decision that conspires to throw a monkey wrench in the works. What does that mean? I, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. It, it's a strange sort of design where no one thing is broken, but basically, I'm going to just take out most of his words here and say that there's just something off about it. That's what I read out of this. So, nothing is broken, and yet it's kind of off. Again, I could kind of justify that. I, I'm not trying to say it's wrong, but why use all those freaking words? Whatever. Now, Game Informer. Um, where do I begin with Game Informer? Game Informer has pretty much never given a Sonic game a good score. If they even give it a decent score, they're like, wow, this is better than we thought. So Game Informer just kind of pisses me the fuck off, but they're like that. You know, if they, if they have their little love childs, like their little Call of Duties and Zeldas, they'll pretty much give them more points just for being that. And the opposite for Sonic. They'll pretty much just look at it and say, no, nah, Sonic, this is going to suck. And they give it a bad score. Um, the proof here is Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations, both games that got pretty good scores overall, and Game Informer hated them both. Why? Because they did. Because it was Sonic. There wasn't enough 2D in it. Um, they didn't like the story. They didn't like the story. I mean, 
it's it's just a game. Just play the game. You're not watching a movie. You're playing a game. If you don't like the story, that's tough. I haven't loved the stories either. It's a game. Like Sonic Generations, they didn't like it because they picked levels from Sonic Colors and Sonic Unleashed. Just play the game! My fucking god. So, Game Informer, let's see what their wise words of wisdom had to say. Oh, yeah, their tagline for the game Lost World, Lost and Damned. Ooh, that's clever. Because he's in the Lost World and he's damned. Yeah, that's funny. All right. So, Game Informer, I didn't even want to write down too much from their review, because it literally spent more time talking about how dumb the story was and how dumb Sonic is than giving anything a substance. And they ended their review very fittingly with, The core game is subpar, even by Sonic standards. If that doesn't show their bias, I don't know what does. The core game is subpar. They could have just left it at that. But then they add, even by Sonic standards. So even for Sonic, this is a bad game. But that's just so bad. That's... I know reviews have a bit of bias. I know their opinion. But good journalism isn't... You know, good journalism is reviewing something. Not being like, well, this was pretty good, but for this guy, like, for anyone else it would suck. But, like... No, just write the review. It's And then Game Informer, on another part of the review, says it's difficult deciding whether the 2D or 3D sections are more offensive. So if I'm somebody who doesn't know the game and I want to decide should I get it or not, and Game Informer is giving me this kind of joke, like, oh, it's hard to tell whether the 2D sections or the 3D sections are worse. Yeah, I get it. That's supposed to tell me it's very bad. But seriously, like that, that doesn't tell me anything. That's not substance. It's like a 15-year-old, it's like Beavis and Butthead, sitting there watching the game going, This game sucks. <laughs> that doesn't tell me a freaking thing. These reviews, for the most part, do not dissuade me. But, you know, when Sonic Unleashed first came out, I was a little worried that so many people were giving it bad scores. Then I played it, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, Sonic Unleashed was not the best Sonic game, but it was fun. I don't care. It had some good moments. Sega's made some questionable calls. I, as a Sonic fan, do question them on some things. I don't like the way they use nostalgia to make all their games seem better than they are. I don't like the fact that every Sonic game now has to have a green hill level. Even this one, you have to have a windy hill, seaside hill, 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 up the hill, down the hill. Like, okay, that, that does get old. There are certain things that Sega does that are just so blatant. Like Sonic 4, they ripped off like pretty much every level from another Sonic game. They're not fooling anybody. I understand that. I understand that not every Sonic game is a 10. I know that Sonic, some Sonic games aren't as good as others, but who is good at this point? You look at Mario games, you look at the new ones even, they're still doing the same crap they did 20 years ago. You know, pipes and skies and stuff, and I don't care. Like, I like the new Mario games, and so does everyone else. But when Sonic does the same things, they're like, ah, just Sonic, subpar. But anyway, um, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Again, I haven't played Sonic Lost World. Just because of these reviews, I'm probably gonna go on the record and make a video review of my own. And I don't give every Sonic game a 10. I've reviewed games in the past. I've even reviewed some of the older Sonic games and given them 7s or 8s if I don't feel like they were up to par. So, I'm not, like, saying Sonic's the greatest or any of that. But some of these reviews really need... Some of these reviewers need to look themselves in the mirror and say, why am I just going after this series? That's all I got. So, agree, disagree, feel free to comment below. Um, Frankie, I don't want to see any comments about how Sonic 06 is the best game ever. It's not. So, that's all I got. Later.